Hello once again. Um, Going to make it a little bit interesting for you because I've heard a lot of I've had a lot of messages recently about this topic from some ladies I know. So, ladies, let me be clear: stop chasing him. You're making him lazy now. I'm being polite about that, and I'll explain in a moment. There is a better way. Now, this is part of my old series of talks in a way, but it's still relevant now because it's come up a lot because we're in the middle of this interesting time, whatever you can call it, quarantine, virus, COVID, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so. For some of my female friends and former clients, there can be a sense of almost um, need to find a partner. At the same time, this is also, it, we're interesting times right now because there's the, there's the need to have a partner weighing on the mind of some of the women I know and the concern about meeting somebody who's safe on more than one level during this time. And the question that's come up a few times from different women, maybe from you, is where do you find him? Where can you look for him? Where can you search for him? All of these words are intentionally phrased this way because this is the, the, um, the pit that people fall into, ladies fall into. And I was talking to a friend of mine a couple of days ago, when was that, Saturday, Friday? It was, it was recently, about how, we're, how a lot of women are getting fed up with the dating apps. With good reason. <laughs> Because, ladies, if you're on the dating apps searching through for men, you're doing his job for it. You're doing his job for him, one. Secondly, you're making him lazy because he doesn't do any work. Because if you seek him out, he doesn't seek you out. Bad form, by the way. And third, you're in the place where you're moving into the hunter role. Hi, Daniel. Nice to see you. And this, this um, and by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, this is Facebook Live first. So I'm talking to people who are watching it live on Facebook. Next time, catch me there. <laughs> All right, back to topic. So the dating apps have been predominantly built for men because we as men are culturally uh, trained, embedded, believed to be hunters. I mean, the old paradigm of the hunter-gatherer mindset, and I'll explain that a bit more detail from Alison Armstrong's teachings because for some of you that goes, I'm not a gatherer, I'm a hunter. It's like, let me explain this. The hunter mindset the hunter consciousness is a masculine mindset because it's linear it's focused it's directional it 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 um it eliminates all distractions you know the sniper mindset that laser focus on going for the gold ignoring what's right in front of us that's the unfortunately the downside of this for men by the way we as masculine men are good at going for the goal irregardless of everything else the feminine and let me, let me sidebar for a second. I'm speaking about masculine and feminine as aligned to male and female. Generally speaking, there are caveats and variations on this, but as a generality, masculine energy, male body, feminine energy, female body, predominantly because we all carry both. Okay, I think you do all the caveats. So, so jumping back in. So in the, 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 in the hunting technique for men, the feminine component is what's called the gatherer, but it's more of a protector-gatherer energy, the way Alison talks about it, which I love the way she frames it. When the men are in the hunting parties, going out hunting for things, and most of the men are, are solo in that party, they're not like teaming up so much, unfortunately. But most of the ladies out there, what they're doing is they're taking care of the village. They're seeking the right safe things to eat. They're protecting from raids from other camps. They're also, this is, this is olden times, by the way. Um, they're also protecting the kids communally from falling, in, falling down, um, in, down a ravine, eating the wrong foods, getting killed by predators, etc., etc. So the feminine is not just gathering fruit. It's not a simple task. It's a massive task. The thing is that for the feminine, the focus point is not linear. It's diffuse, as the way Alison puts it. The feminine looks around at all things at once. One of the challenges we men face around women is they see things we don't. <laughs> and this is the, one of the positives and negatives of masculine and feminine polarity. Anyway, back to the dating conversation. So I'm talking about hunter in this mindset because the dating apps are designed for hunting. If you have noticed that, most of the dating apps out there are presenting to you lots of pictures you can swipe on. And that um, approach is a masculine approach. There are some dating apps, dating sites like eHarmony set, designed more for women because it's not set up with a visual target. That's intentional to try and get men to get past that point. Has worked for some, hasn't worked for others. No judgment on that. Um, I think Bumble is set up the same way, where women are in charge. But most of the dating apps out there, the, the majority of them, are designed for men to go searching for, well, the, the way Alison calls it, like a sorting system. Where it's basically, are you the one, are you the one, are you the one, and you swipe accordingly. But if, ladies, if you're doing this, you're letting the man be lazy. 
because it's our job, our role to hunt. Yes, I'm going to expose the men for this one. Our role and responsibility in the, in the world as a masculine energy is to go seek, go find, go hunt. So in the dating arena, we're the pursuer, not the pursued. And in some of the past relationships, I was the pursued. I know how it feels weirdly on the wrong side of the fence. And of course, at that time, I didn't know better. Now I know better. I have stories about my mistakes in the past, which I won't share here, but there's plenty of those. That's an invitation. If you want to work with me, I'll give you some of my stories personally. <laughs> so the focus point for ladies is to move out of the hunting space and into the receiving space. And it sounds simplistic, but let me explain what I mean by this. The power you have as a feminine energy is one of the things that we men in a masculine don't generally have access to unless we tap into our own feminine. And again, we carry both energies. Men carry masculine and feminine. Women can carry masculine and feminine. And again, I'm talking about heterosexual, predominantly uh, polarities in this conversation. There is different languaging slightly for, for the gay relationships and other pieces too, but I'm, I'm sticking to what I know best, okay? Just to be clear. I'm not trying to exclude anybody, just being clear to myself. So, you ladies, the power is in your receptivity. Actually, it's more than that. It's your ability to attract. You know, the law of attraction is really a feminine skill, just to be clear about it. Even though we all as humans attract things because of what we put out there, the power of attraction is a feminine um, aspect, feminine focus. So when you're on the dating apps, and you, and you can be on the dating apps, but the precursor to that in my languaging is that you're actually spending the time before you go on the dating apps getting really clear about what you want to attract. This is the thing. Most women, like most men, go onto the dating apps with maybe two or three ideas in their head of what they want. Then they go seeking and like adjusting their vision to fit the picture they see. They in fact want to adjust their... Um, Oh, that's oh, I should have said that. <laughs> they want to adjust their gap in their lives to fit the person they're looking at online. Yeah, I'm saying it that way intentionally. I didn't want to say it. I was going to say it worse than that, but I kept it polite. So my, my invitation to you is to step back from that. In fact, when I, when I coach my clients, and I've got a program online, which I have, which I'll tell you about at the end, probably, if I think about it, it's designed, it's called Attract the Man You Want, because the truth is, ladies, your power is in the ability to attract what you want. Not chase what you want, not seek what you want, not go find what you want. It's to attract what you want. And that starts with being in a place of receptivity. Now, let me be clear. That receptivity is extremely qualified. I'm not implying, suggesting, saying that you just roll over and take whatever comes your way. That's not what I mean here. And 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 if you know my work, you know what I stand for. In my messaging, I've said quite often, I'm a passionate champion of the divine feminine. I'm very respectful and, and protective of feminine energy. It's my, it's my underlying focus in my life. So when I'm talking about being receptive, it's, re- it's receptive with refinement. It's receptive with discernment. It's also being receptive with fierce protection of who you are. That's going to be three things to play with right there. So how you do this is you've got to be willing to look at what it is you really want. Now, another piece to that is you want to be clear about what you want, not what you think you're missing. I was posting on a friend's wall earlier today about the conversation about codependence and about the quote from Jeremy Maguire, which I throw around frequently, which is, you know, you complete me. Not true. Nobody completes anybody. So if you feel like it'd be romantic if somebody said you complete me to them, or they they said they complete me, you complete me to you, get over it. It's not healthy. Because that is absolutely implying you're not complete on your own. Sorry to break it to you, you already are. So you start with understanding what you want, not what you think you're missing. Now, that can be a short list, a long list, depends what you need, to, what you want to focus on. But it starts with you getting clear about who you are in that place. Because again, you are not missing anything. You are whole and complete. Single or in a relationship, neither, neither place changes you to be incomplete. I think I made that point clear. So then get clear about your vision. What is it you really want to have in a relationship? And I would make it important enough, because they're going to be the red flags and green flags conversation about what you must have, what you don't want, or you can't deal with. Like if they smoke and you don't want to be the smoker, that's going on your red flag list. Or is it there be someone who's going to be loyal and, and monogamous? That's on your green, green flag list, and that sort of idea. Is to get clear what that is. Now, this is the piece that most people miss, by the way, the next piece. Well, there's more to it than this, but you know, I'm not going to give you my whole course online. I'm going to give you a couple of pieces. So get clear about what you want. And it may require you to start looking at what doesn't work for you in the past to do the flips, flip the script to what you do want. I, in fact, did that myself where I looked at some of my past relationships and I saw what I didn't want, 
happen again. I didn't want to ha- well, I didn't want to have happen again because what happened in the past. And so I flipped the script to what I wanted differently in the future. Not saying I don't want this. I'm going, no, what I want is this. So, for example, in one conversation, one of my um, refreshes, reframes, I was very clear I didn't want, do not want to be in a relationship with a masculine woman, which I had been in the past, because it pushes me out of my masculine. Excuse me. I let myself get pushed out of my masculine. Let me be clear about that. I'm very clear now that what I want in a partner is a feminine partner who owns her feminine as a beautiful woman inside and out in that energy. That's, that's clear for me. Bulletproof. Absolutely. That's, so you focus your intentions on where you want to go, not where you don't want to go. Clear? The big piece that people are missing, excuse me, the big piece the ladies are missing in this conversation, is it's not just about writing it down. And, although I recommend you do this as well, it's not just about making pictures of it. It's about trying it on as a experiential feeling. The biggest piece that I think we miss is we don't learn how to embody what we really want. Affirmations, same as doing vision boards, are wonderful reminders, but they only work when you can take the energy inside and embody the feeling of it to make it really happen. And again, this is, these are pieces out of my Attract the Man You Want program, so if you want to message me about that, I'll tell you about it. I'm not going to put the links here, because this is meant to be a neutral Facebook Live, but I want to give you some teaching. So again, start with what you really want to have. You may want to start what you don't want to have as a, a starting point to flip the script and get what you want to have. You may want to do some sort of reminders, again, affirmations, um, vision boards, things like that. But definitely take a place to embody the energy of what you want. How is it going to feel to be in that relationship? How are you going to feel when you're in that relationship? And how is he going to feel around you? Bringing those things, yes, Daniel, exactly. Clarity is power. And embodiment is part of that journey. Because when you embody it, that's the other thing, by the way. You might write down a bunch of things you want to have in your relationship or do pictures of it. But when you start to feel into it, how does that feel to be in that place? You may get a clunk like a, no, that doesn't fit, energy. So in a way, embodiment is a, um, a test drive. It's a way to really feel into, does this really resonate for me or not? And when you own that space, it shifts energy in a very powerful way. My course has eight, eight, pro, eight modules in it. This is only about three of them I just gave you, so I'm giving you a taste to test of what it's about. But I want to make, you, make a promise to you. If you, yeah, it is a promise, yeah. <laughs> If you choose, if you make a um, clear intention to shift from pursuing, hunting, seeking to owning what you want, stepping into your own power and really starting to feel what you want to attract, it will shift your completely, it will change your relationship dating paradigm completely. If you do that alone, and if you want to guarantee results in a much powerful way, I do suggest you reach out to me and I'll give you link, the link to my, my online course. I might put it, might put it in the comments. I might put it in the comments. But the thing about it is, if a lady's especially to, mm, let me say that again, for you ladies in particular, the world has been training you to be in your masculine more than ever. Right now in this world, it's like being physically independent, taking care of yourself, and especially if you're alone, you gotta do everything to take care of yourself. Well, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on you look at it, being independent and self-sufficient is great, but being um, so independent you don't want a partner or don't, Um, make space for a partner energetically, they're not so great. So if you're single and you want to be in a relationship, you do want to have a space to invite them into energetically, not create a vacuum or to be incomplete, but to make space for them. So energetically, that can be simple as making space in your home. This is feng shui stuff, so these are just little tips. It can be making space in your closet or putting, making room for another toothbrush in your bathroom, even if it's that crazy. Make sure you've got your bed set up to be accommodated for somebody else. I'm being simplistic about it, but these keys help. You know, the Feng Shui is a powerful teaching. I'm not a facilitator, but I know these are things myself. Making room for a partnership is part of the journey. So again, back to focusing on yourself first and make make yourself the magnet to attract what you want. A little PS on that. I mentioned earlier about you you don't want to roll over and just take what you get. The thing about being clear about what you want in your vision the most important thing to recognize is that's now your barometer or your, your, like a tuning fork. When you have that clarity of what you want, that incredible that vision, that embodiment you take on and you feel, when you are owning that space, you start to notice that the men you're looking for out there or the men you want to attract out there, you start to notice that the one, the, a lot of them don't resonate. And that's good news, by the way. Because when you're getting clear about what you want, what doesn't fit it doesn't tend to show up as much. This is the power of this. You start to actually, in a way, repel or become invisible to, or they become invisible to you, those people that don't match your vision. 
but it also means the ones that do match your vision start to become more visible. Now, I'm not saying you can be like a neon sign over their head. <laughs> nice idea, but it doesn't work quite that, that way. But when you meet somebody, you'll start to discover pretty quickly in conversation that they start to resonate with who you are. You'll find a, a match. Now, I'm trying to give all these caveats and PSs on it, but I want to make sure you get clear. It's not a, it's not a, like a, a slam dunk. It does require discernment and focus and intention. So you may get some close calls, and this is part of the journey, is that when you're going through getting your vision clear, you might discover when you meet somebody, they really do fit your vision almost. This is good news, not bad news. And again, you're not going to roll over and take what you get, because it's not about settling, about being clear what you want. By meeting somebody who's almost that, and ideally you get to know pretty quickly that they're almost that, but not all of what you want, you get to decide if your vision is true for you, or if one of the things on the vision that doesn't fit this person is no longer valid. Because you can adjust your vision. It's not locked in place where you can't do anything with it. So understand that your vision, your intention, is something that you choose for yourself. Nobody else, is effect, is effect, is a, nobody else affects it or is affected by it. But when you meet somebody, you all get clear if that person you're meeting matches that vision fully. And if they're missing a couple of items or their vision doesn't quite match who they are, is that enough? You get to decide this. It is always about the power of choice that you have in your hands. And again, you also, or I should say, I haven't said it again, but as a reminder, you get to say no. You get the power to choose to say, you know what, this is not for me anymore. If it doesn't line up, go back to your vision. But be willing to hold true to your heart. Because your vision, ideally, is tuned into your heart. That's where I start from with my clients. And when you understand that's where it lines up, then everything unfolds with the right energy. There is no timeline on this. And again, the, oh, that's the place we come back to. The dating apps are a good place to go be visible, not hunt, but be visible, excuse me, once you have your list complete. Once you're clear about what you want in your, your vision, so not your list, your vision is complete, about what it is you really want. When you're on the dating apps, you may start getting attention from those that don't match. That does happen, unfortunately, because you'll be shining your light more brightly. Sorry, this is the side effect. You may attract um, less than ideal co co um, co um, what's the word? courtiers. No, whatever. You may attract people you're not, men you're not interested in. But the thing about it is when you get clear, you'll have more discernment and you'll know quicker, more quickly, this is a match or it's not a match. So the dating apps are okay to use as a receiver and as a witness to versus a pursuer. So this is making sense from what I said at the beginning. Um, this is, in a lot of ways, the core of my work with my clients because my audience is women. I help them really get clear on the internal work to be able to attract what they want on the outside. Okay, we'll put, I'll put the link in the comments afterwards. I was deciding, I was on the fence about this, but I might put the link in the comments afterwards. If you want to check it out, have a look. If you want to reach out to me, message me. If you want any questions about this topic, put them below the video when I sign off. I'll respond after I sign off again. Um, I thank you for watching. Appreciate you being with me. And if you have any questions about this, let me know. If you want to share this with anybody you think should see this, because it may go, oh, wake up, call. Feel free to do that. And uh, that's about it. I thank you for watching, as always. Um, I have got a whole bunch of Facebook Live stored on YouTube. If you want to watch them, um, message me. I'll send you the link for that because that's a thousand Facebook Lives. Yes, a thousand Facebook Lives called Messages from the Masculine. This is kind of the one thousandth and one thousandth and one thousand a thousand of once. <laughs> it's the it's, it's the first one over a thousand, and so um, I can send you a link for that if you want to find out more about it. Um, and if you want to work, work with me, reach out to me. I'll give you some guidance, support, and some tips. And uh, I hope this makes sense. This is a transformational way to look at, at <clears throat> excuse me, dating and relationship, perhaps. And uh, they may just get you lined up. I thank you for watching. Hang on. <clears throat> excuse me. I thank you for watching, as always. I will see you again soon. These broadcasts show up when they do. And a reminder, as always, please, take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. <laughs>